Uh, thank you, Stephen. Um, well, I feel I should start with an apology, actually, because um, the last hour or so we've covered an enormous amount of ground. And um, you can't feel, as Robin mentioned, the word impact. And I imagine the impact on you is like the impact on me. It's tremendous. Um, and I'm afraid I'm probably not going to make much of an impact on you after all of that. Um, thank you to the Royal Society for this wonderful venue and for supporting us uh, yet again. And uh, thank you to our speakers, Robin Shahira, Keen, Irina, Miasar uh, on Zoom, um, and everyone that's been involved in, uh, in this evening. It really is so heartening to, to stand here and look at a packed audience on, on this warm evening. And thank you all for coming and showing your, your interest. I want to start this short address with three quotes. So I'm supposed to be talking about the future, uh, which is very difficult to predict. It's impossible to predict. Um, but I'm going to do a little bit of past, not back quite as far as Robin. Um, and starting five years ago in 2018, um, an editorial on academic freedom in the journal Nature, which will, some of you will be familiar with, which began with these words. And I've never actually been able to forget these words. Hidden inside a 1970s office block close to London's Waterloo Station is a tiny organisation that has helped tens of thousands of academics find sanctuary from conflict. And that's what CARE is, a tiny organisation. Actually, as I'll tell you in a minute, it's a little bit bigger than it, than it was 10 years ago. <clears throat> My second quote is from 14 years ago in 2009 from a British politician, in fact, a government minister. CARE is a fiercely independent organisation, so I won't be telling you who it is. Um, in conversation with persecuted academics from Iraq, Sudan and Zimbabwe, Wherever there is a dictatorship or totalitarian regime, its first quarrel is with those who oppose it. They are frequently found in universities, places where teaching and research should flourish. All over the world, university lecturers and researchers can face persecution, imprisonment, and torture for challenging those in power. That's the backdrop. And the last thing I want to say to go right back to 1933, and Stephen said, Quoting the Academic Assistance Council statement, our only aims are the relief of suffering and the defense of learning and science. But the preface to that, which I think is worth mentioning, our action implies no unfriendly feelings to the people of any country. It implies no judgment on forms of government or on any political issue between countries. Our only aims are the relief of suffering and the defense of learning and science. And here we are 90 years later, and that I think still defines our mission. But looking at recent history, just in the last 10 years, because we celebrated our 80th anniversary, of course, um, 10 years ago, in 2013. And in the publication at that time, CARA had four full-time and two part-time staff. Today, we have 20 full-time staff and at least three part-time staff. So still very small, but not really tiny. And in that la la those last 10 years, it's been quite, quite transformational. I'm a scientist, so I won't use the word exponential increase, because of course it isn't an exponential increase, but, um, but it, it's really quite, really quite impressive. You caught glimpses of that CARA team in that video. There's 20 full-time people now. And I couldn't stand here and, and, and uh, talk to anybody about CARA without paying tribute to the dedication, hard work, and commitment um, of that group of people. It, it really is uh, enormously uh, impressive. Uh, and of course, they're here tonight. They're quite easy to spot, because they're younger than most of us. Um, <laughs> although having said that, I'm pleased to see some young people in the audience who, who don't work for CARA. 10 years ago, the CARA University Network had 74 members. Today, it's 135. Again, not an exponential increase, but pretty big, almost, almost double. And the CARA Fellowship Scheme, at that time 10 years ago, was supporting 24 CARA Fellows on placement. Today's programme is working with over 200 CARA Fellows. I don't know if Robin will say we're starting to get to close to exponential, but, and maybe we are. And just to follow up what Stephen said, CARA's Syria programme launched in 2016, currently working with over 200 active participants. And he mentioned that army 
army of individual UK academics that work on that Syria programme, and it really is a, a, an, arm, an army that, that numbers hundreds. Uh, and it's, it's a fantastic uh, support that individuals in the UK Higher Education Network have given us, as well as institutions. Don't forget, there are individuals uh, as well that do that. So, uh, Cara busier now since any time in the 1930s, but I, Robin showed some fantastic numbers there. So I don't know if maybe we have to go back and, and work out really if we are busier than, than we were back in the 1930s. But we can't stand still. And um, it's useful to think in 10 year blocks, as I just have. So, what about the next 10 years, our 100th anniversary in 2033? Some of you will be here, I hope. And there are really three strands or themes to that. The first is the fellowship programme that sits, sits at our core. Um, and our plan is to build on the experience of that programme, increase still further the numbers of threatened academics we can help to get to safety. CARA's launched in 1933 by many of the leading academics and scientists in the UK. And it is the child of UK higher education. And we would say, to UK universities, um, don't regard CARA as a charity that you support, regard it as your charity. Um, and that's really what CARA is. The higher education sector faces many challenges, many financial challenges at the moment. And we've really seen in spite of this, how universities have been able to mobilize and find resources that have made it possible for us to help to rescue so many of their colleagues. And the university sector's rapid response to the crisis in Afghanistan, and also to the, our emergency call for help uh, after the Syria-Turkey er, Turkey earthquake uh, was extremely impressive indeed. It's a very good example of the fact that universities can get together and can mobilize quite quickly. And we look forward to continuing that work with the university sector to pursue its mission even more intensively. Secondly, or second major strand, regional programs, and Stephen mentioned Iraq and Zimbabwe, now in the past, but Syria very much uh, in, the, in, in the present. And to ensure that we can just develop, deliver support, not just to the UK, but in other parts of the world, and what we're engaged in starting to do now is to produce what we call a toolkit. That's to draw on those experiences from our regional programs, particularly in Syria, to try and get ourselves into a situation because CARA responds to crises. We don't know where they're going to come from. We don't know all, often what, what the nature of them will be. But when we respond to them, we often respond with a blank sheet of paper. We want to try and get into a situation where our experience in working in other parts of the world will give us some sort of start, some sort of template to work with. We call it a toolkit, and that's what we're determined to try and get together. So we look forward to working together with our university partners to pursue that mission, regional programs, and helping people in the UK. And the third thing, which is sort of new, which again Stephen's talked about, is working with government. And that's the Researchers in Risk program focused on Ukraine. And we are in the process of trying to further develop that to get some sort of framework together so that we can help in situations at fairly short notice. And CARA, together with the National Academies, British Academy and the Royal Society, responded. And they responded quickly and ably when resources were made available, and that was the key. Um, that potential is there if we can have resources, and we're hopefully going to uh, try and get that point across to government. So more of, this, more of the same and some new stuff uh, to get onto a, a, more solid, a more solid footing. Back to Robin talking about the UK's reputation over many years in Europe for working uh, so well and leading in this work and we want to carry on with that and one final um, quote that comes from our founding statement individuals with exceptional abilities exceptionally trained and their preservation and their protection for the good of society at large so 
Thank you for all your interest. Um, Please think of CARA as your organisation. Without your help and support, we could do, of course, nothing. And with that help, we will do much more again in the next 10 years. It really is very simple. The more money we have, the more people we can help. And it's right that that final appeal for support should not come from me or from Stephen or from CARA. And I hand over to Jonathan, because after he's finished with you, you're going to get some very well-earned refreshment, I hope. Thank you.